Today we're catching a lift from a guy who's done the lot. He's got silverware and medals from Ireland, England, the Celtic nations and Europe. And at 31 years of age, this Leinster and Ireland flanker shows no signs of slowing down. Today we're getting a lift with Shane Jennings. So Shane, thanks for bringing us for the spin this morning. Um, there's lots of things we can talk about, but I suppose we go back to the start. When did it all begin for you? You're a Rath Farnham boy originally, right? Uh, yeah, well I grew up in Knockline and then I moved to uh, Rath Farnham when I was about maybe 9 or 10 or something around that age. So I first started playing rugby up in Knockline, uh, the community games. Oh yeah. Uh, did you, you play any gas kids? Yeah, well, the school I went to was St. Colum Kills in Knock Line, so that was a gas school. Yes, yeah, yeah. But uh, I played a bit of football, but I, was, I wasn't that good. I was pretty useless. At it. <laughs> so uh, I had two brothers, though, so the two brothers were playing rugby in Mary's school. And then my alpha was involved with rugby as well in St. Mary's Rugby Club. So um, that's how I kind of got into it more in the dancing. And then obviously, once, there was, once I was able to play up in uh, Knock Line, that's when it kind of all started. So. That's where it began. Folks, I can see our partners with Leinster Rugby and uh, you're one of the, the lucky players who gets to be a brand ambassador for the year. It's obviously a, a, a nice brand to be involved with and a, a nice yeah. car to get to drive. Oh, no, it's beautiful, yeah. No, I've been driving the CC now for a while and it's unbelievably comfortable and uh, drives well. And yeah, we have a spoil to be fair, you know. They're, they're looking after us very well over the last number of years and thankfully we've had a good relationship with them, you know. Um, they're a quality brand and they want to be associated with uh, Leinster and hopefully they see us as a quality operation as well. So yeah, it's worked well and uh, long may it continue because we're a beautiful car to drive. I think probably the most infamous performance probably in your time and the one that you and I suppose Johnny Sexton are credited with most is that final against Northampton and whether the uh, the rumours are should be believed or not, I don't know, but it would appear that you really came on and Changed, changed the game a little bit in the second half of that final. There was a big, big gap to be made up, and within 15, 20 minutes of the second half, it was a different final. Yeah, it certainly was. It was all, all, all me, you're, you're coming across saying that way. Well, like, there goes the rumours. You know, people <laughs> say you and Johnny had a lot to do yeah, with it there they're, in half time. There are rumours, unfortunately. Um, no, it was brilliant. Like I remember at half time, I said we were obviously on the bench, and I remember I was kind of a bit numbed by the whole thing. I was kind of wasn't saying much, and I was like, Jesus, what's happening here? And but wasn't really all that nervous or affected by it. I don't know, I don't know whether I paid much attention to it or I knew that we had played quite well and that was the worrying thing. I actually thought we had played all right, but Northampton had just played very, very well. Yeah. And uh, they were on fire, you know, and they had some serious players that were playing well and doing a lot of damage. So yeah, I just remember running in and Stan Wright was like, right, come on, we have to be positive here. The prop used to play here and he goes, no matter what, we just have to kind of put a good face then and give them a G up, this, that, the other. So there was lots of talk going on. The scrum was a bit of an issue. <clears throat> the lads got sorted around a laptop and had a discussion. And I went in for a piss and I didn't hear all the talk that was going on. <laughs> so all these stories about Johnny saying these things about Liverpool and I don't even know anything about soccer, so I wouldn't have made any, uh, <laughs> right. wouldn't have any relevance on me. But I think the, the most important thing, people say, oh, what happened? Well, I think what actually happened was we, we, we started being a lot more accurate and uh, everybody stepped up like the 15 lads that are on the pitch the subs that came on everybody that was actually involved if you watch it back the amount of times the lads did the right thing at the, uh, in the right position in the field or made the right decision or made the right tackle and these kind of things and uh, we just picked up the pace and I remember like after we scored our second try I think it was uh, we still had one to go and um, this is where I live, that's the only place where I <laughs> the, the, uh, the second drive, we're still about seven points behind, and I just, I turned to one of the lads and said, we have this, these, these lads are flat, and you could see yeah. their body language, it was gone, and uh, it was magic, it was an unbelievable, I think it was the only game I've probably ever been involved in where something has clicked just like that. So after that Heineken Cup final that everybody kind of assumed was in the tank at half time and everybody then couldn't believe we'd, we'd I'm supposed to be, uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to be, uh, you were there as well, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, uh, in, I was there in spirit, yeah, exactly. that's what we need, um, but after that, that final, a lot of, a lot of guys put their hands up for, for, for the Irish squad and, and for the, the World Cup that was coming up, you no more than any other and uh, you acquitted yourself very well in, in New Zealand and, but it was a kind of a bittersweet couple of weeks over there like a lot of big big performances but then kind of just not followed up I suppose with the consistency you look for yeah it was a real pity now uh, it was probably the best trip I've ever been on in my life uh, in terms of rugby you know um, 
the amount of buy-in from lads uh, going into the tournament. We had a great pre-season down in Carton House and uh, there was lads carrying knocks and uh, the amount of lads that were just sticking their head down and getting the work done and it was an unbelievable attitude going into the tournament and uh, it was a brilliant, brilliant, uh, brilliant few weeks, you know. But uh, yeah, the consistency, I, we played some tough teams, you know. The America game was a nightmare, a pissy wet night in Taranaki and we came through that well and then obviously the Australian game was an incredible game. Uh, it was unbelievable, you know. Uh, the atmosphere in the place and the performance it just it just kicked the whole thing on you know and then that's that people got a bit of belief from it played Russia in uh, I think it was Rotorua and then the Italian game in Otago kicked us on to the quarter final but I think to be fair you know not that not that we underestimated Wales I don't think anybody underestimated Wales but I think you have to understand how good they actually were mm. and that day they were they played very very well you know um, they did a good bit of homework on us and uh, we couldn't get into the game they started well I think I think Shane Williams got an early try or someone got an early try and then when you're trying to chase a game against a quality team it's very difficult you know so um, it was a real pity you know because I think everybody feels that that was one that did get away but uh, that's the way it happens you know you're not entitled to anything and you don't you, you don't expect to win just because oh it's going well and we play we beat Australia you know so uh, that was a tough one to take you know and I think players when we're finished rugby I think the lads that were involved in that will look back and that, that, that's what I got away but these things happen you can move on unfortunately yeah, what about I suppose after the, the pro career finishes up no doubt you'll keep involved in rugby in some way shape or form will you go back and talk out a few times and play for Mary's or yeah no I'd, I'd like to that would be the plan uh I'd love to go up and play with some mates uh, that I played with, you know, in school and at under 20s up in Mary's and uh, to try and kind of go back to the club and uh, kind of enjoy it that way. But whether or not my body lets me, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I can't, I can't, I can't imagine it'd be too strenuous on the body at J4s or 5s or 6s or whatever <laughs> it might be. But uh, No hopes to play AL then? No, no, I have zero ambitions to play for AL <laughs> when I finish. Some young lads beat the car in. So, uh, no, well, that's the idea, like, on a sporting front, do that, but, you know, I, unfortunately, I don't know what I want to do. I'm studying at the moment to, to try and see if I have any interest in any fields or whatever like that, but hopefully it's not uh, it's not in the, the too near future, you know. I've still got a few years to uh, exactly. to decide, and uh, it's trying to best prepare for that transition is, is the most important thing, so we'll keep plugging away at my studies for the time being. Happy days. Well, listen, thanks for taking the time, man, for the lift this morning. And, uh, and best of luck with the rest of the season and long may you continue. Yeah, cheers, thanks so